We have the scoop on the best kid-friendly apps the iPad has to offer. And we'll prepare a tasty traditional meal for Passover. Home and Family, coming up next, a brand new show every day, only on Hallmark Channel, the heart of TV. From Universal Studios Hollywood, welcome to Home and Family. All right, All so right. Passover begins this Monday here with a traditional and kosher Passover meal is our wonderful chef, Kim Kushner. Welcome, Kim. Hey. You're going to prepare a wonderful dish for us. Yeah, brisket yeah, dish. Brisket. Oh, let's see your magic. Okay, Ready? Wait, it works. wait for it. Oh, there it is. Oh, you hit it. It's a little slow. It's a little oh, slow. That's right. okay. We're working on the timing on okay, that. I'll work on it. Now, is this uh, traditional for the Passover meal? It is. Yeah. Brisket is a great dish to make at any holiday, especially Passover, because it feeds a lot of people. You can prepare it in advance, and it's just warm and comforting and just wonderful all year round. Well, thank you. We look forward to making mm. that in our kitchen later on. Yes. Thank you. Listen, we're in the kitchen now. Let's just move forward because this is, we eat. I worked <laughs> up an appetite. Passover is the Jewish holiday that commem commemorates the story of the Exodus in which the ancient Israelis, Israelites rather, were freed from slavery in Egypt and with a kosher Passover recipe for beef brisket. Welcome Kim Kushner to the house. Yeah. Welcome. I wait to get into this. First of all, can you explain to us, please, what kosher means? Kosher refers to the Jewish dietary laws. So there are some restrictions, some things we can eat, some things we can't eat. Overall, we're doing okay. We're not hungry. We're not going hungry. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a set of laws that you that you follow. Strictly. Yes, that we do. Okay. Well, I understand. I love brisket. This is so tender. Fall off. There's no bone. But if there was, it'd be falling off the bone. It's That's so true. Uh, can you make this the night before? You Would can you make, suggest that we do that? Absolutely. This is why one of the reasons why I love making brisket is that it's very simple to prepare, and it's some, one of those dishes you can make in advance. You can make it the night before. Guess what? You can make it the month before and put it in the freezer and have it ready to go. I would keep it in the freezer all the time just for sandwiches. This is so delicious. I can't wait to share it with everyone. So can you, you show us how you, you, no, you can't eat it frozen. Well, you said I keep you it in the freezer and have sandwiches. I, no, just, I would slice it up well, and put them oh. in bags and put them in the freezer and take them out when I need them. Oh, God. Well, so that's what that's I do. Yeah. Sometimes I'll order a big brisket and I'll cook it and then I'll slice it up and I'll put it in, individ you know, in smaller in portions oh, so that okay. I just grab them out for dinner or for sandwiches. I was going to throw on. the whole thing in a bag and just take it out and eat it. It's so good. Okay. <laughs> so could you demo for us Absolutely. So it's really simple. We're going to put some olive oil into a hot pan. I'm going to turn this up a little for you. Thank you. Um, yeah. And what we want to do is we want to sear both sides of the brisket. So you're going to season it pretty nice and generously with some salt. I think this looks like some good kosher salt and some black pepper. Now you have to use kosher salt? You don't this? have to. Okay. Kosher salt just means that the, the granules, the pieces of salt are a little bit bigger and thicker. So for the flavor, it's a little stronger. So we're going to put this down right here. We're going to get a good sear onto it. Ooh. I love that sound. Yeah, I like that sound too. Yeah. So you're going to brown both sides of it? We're going to brown both sides of it. And that's, what that's really going to do is that's going to soak in the flavors and the moisture and it's going to seal it in. And um, once we do that, we are going to also throw in some nice sliced onions. And I wanted to get a head start on this recipe. So what I like to do, and this is a great tip for viewers in general, is I like to saute a big, big bag of onions. I'll, like I'll take maybe 10 or 20 onions and I'll slice them up and I'll saute them in olive oil, some salt, some pepper until they're really nice and caramelized and sweet and beautiful. And then what I do is, again, I just put them in individual Ziploc bags and I throw them in the freezer. So anytime I'm about to cook something, I mean sauteed onions will enhance any dish. Oh, look what's so, coming. Look at that. Oh, there it is. Oh. 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 What do you wow. say? Sweet. What do you have? That is side? a gingered butternut squash. It's also a recipe that yeah, is yeah, found in my cookbook, the modern menu. That and it is, delicious. thank you. So, so here's what we're going to do. Um, go ahead, please. Mm. Look at that oh, nice, beautiful Look how beer. beautiful that sear is. Beautiful. Thank you. So now, uh, when what you, you turn it over, do you add the, how is it, you guys? Mm. Is it delicious. Is delicious? <laughs> All right. Mm. So now we have the onions. The onions. So what we're going to do now is we are going to remove the brisket. Once it's seared on both sides, I'm going to remove it from the pan. I'm going to just move this here to make it a little bit easier for transferring purposes. And once both sides are nice and seared, 
It's obviously not cooked at this point. We're just searing both sides. I'm going to use the same pan, and I'm going to add my onions to that oil that's already a little brown. I'm going to add the onions in. And you want to saute them the same way so they're nice and caramelized. Is it good? I know it's amazing. I can't wait to get into it over here. We need this recipe written down. It is. It's going to be on our website. It's going to be on the website, and it's in my cookbook um, along with a, a bunch of other great recipes. And, you know, I wanted to just mention that the cookbook is a kosher cookbook, but it's also just a great cookbook that happens to be kosher. You don't have to be kosher to enjoy the recipes, right? I it's know. backwards. Wait a minute. Oh, that's that's not it. No, I know, but this oh. is the Passover. <laughs> it's backwards. Is that how it's called? Is this what it's called? <laughs> no, because I always open it this way, but no, then the left, Hebrew. Hebrew. Right. left, right. right. <laughs> so it's. Can you pronounce this for me, please? The Mitsuda Linear Passover Hagada. Hagada. There you go. Very good. Mm, the recipe is in here. No, mm, no it's not. Oh, it's in here. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is this what you read? You read. I've been to Passover you know dinner. Christina, I read from it. Christina. We're not in Yiddish. You know, Christina, we, one, of, one, of the, one of the ingredients in this recipe is some red wine, but I'm just wondering if you sampled it before we started. No. <laughs> There's a lot of confusion going on here. No, I know you read okay. from the book. So we're going we're gonna to make the sauce, which is some whole berry cranberry sauce, mm. which adds some natural sweetness. And then I use some ketchup. Oh, I love ketchup. And if you don't want to use ketchup, you could use any tomato-based product, tomato paste, tomato sauce. And then I'm going to add in the red wine. And if you want, I can pour you a glass. No more for our no please. More, no, no more, no more. <laughs> the limit. Really good. She no. reached the limit. Wine? This nope. is a kosher wine, and there are some really wonderful kosher for Passover wines and kosher, wa kosher wines in general. So I'm just going to whisk this sauce together. The onions are nice and browned. I'm going to return okay. the brisket into the pan. Just like this. By the way, the onions add so much to this. Sweetness. They really do, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Really, yeah. really good. And, and then I'm and gonna. It just falls apart. Uh -huh. Okay, Me we're gonna. Too. Oh, I'm. I'm that, okay. And I love you guys. <laughs> 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 no, so you we're... don't need teeth for this. You really don't. I mean, never, you know. Then my relatives in Texas could all eat. That's right. I didn't mean it that way. I meant it just could fall apart in your mouth. All right, well, we, okay, need to, we need to put that in the oven and take out the gonna, finished yes, product. We are so going to cover this up and put this in the oven. And we'll do that in a sec. And in That's the not just an ordinary oven. I want you to know that. It's a magic oven. It is a it's magic oven. It's a magic Barbie oven. oven. Thank you. <laughs> and look what we have here. Oh. There it is. Wait for it. Mm. Look at that. take this out of the oven too so we have at the same time those are the ginger yeah. butternut squash <laughs> how beautiful oh, that, that is <laughs> <laughs> that was quick but not that they don't deserve it it's, they do you know, I want everybody yeah, to do. see this though yep. we got to bring, bring it over, over here it's a beautiful so brisket so what you would then do is you would take it out of the sauce and you would let it cool over and I recommend cooling it overnight because that way it's much makes for much look easier at slicing look at that it just falls right apart this looks mm. so amazing yeah. Can I put it like, this is nice and hot. Can I just put it right sure. oh. put it there? Wow. Okay, perfect. Beautiful. Listen, for, for this recipe, for Kim Kushner's recipe, for, I'm going to talk with my mouth full because I just can right now. <laughs> I can't stop feeding myself. Uh, beef brisket and the ginger sweet potatoes featured here. You can go to our website. You can get all the information there. That is so And <laughs> pick up her book. It's The Modern Menu. It's available right now. Or Christina will pronounce the title uh. of the other one. Um, <laughs> Rook Natai or Denai Rook <laughs> When we come back, Adventure Girl Stephanie Michaels is here. She's showing us how we can ditch that big, big suitcase, start packing much smaller for carry on for that spring vacation we're going on, right? There you go. All right. Pardon me for eating my mouthful. I'll talk to my mouthful.